The foot is the part of the horse's body which is in constant contact with the ground and therefore plays a big role in dealing with the interface between the horse and the ground. Uh, in dealing with the interface between the, the horse or the foot and the ground, uh, there are several factors that the foot addresses, one being traction. It's the foot's job to uh, establish traction in the various types of footing so the horse can propel himself forward or stabilize himself. Uh, the second element is support. Obviously the foot supports the limb and the rest of the horse's body, so the foot needs to be strong and have proper shape and mass to be able to accommodate that role of support. Uh, the third element is protection. The hoof the job is to protect the sensitive structures within the hoof capsule of the foot, such as the bone, tendon, and ligaments, and the vasculature. And the fourth role of the foot is shock absorption. There are several studies showing that the, the foot itself is able to dampen the vibrations generated during ground impact by as much as 70 to 80 percent. Uh, so it's amazing this small structure is able to absorb a significant amount of shock uh, before that, those vibrations reach structures further up the limb. One of the main reasons we shoe horses is to provide traction. Uh, it's very important to take into consideration the different surfaces a horse may be working on, whether it's grass or wet grass or, or dirt or sand or maybe one of the various synthetic surfaces available. When a foot impacts the ground, there should be a normal amount of slide. So if you watch some of these videos, you'll see the horse's foot slides some before it comes to a stop. A certain amount of slide is normal. You certainly don't want a foot to hit the ground and stop suddenly. That puts a lot of uh, jolt or a lot of excessive force on the hoof capsule and the structures above it as well. So in, in picking out a shoe for a horse, you know, we, we take into consideration the type of footing or ground the horse will be on. You may see there are some shoes that have a full crease around them or a fullered shoe. These shoes provide a little more traction. Uh, this would be a shoe you'd see like on a, a cross country horse or a polo horse or a barrel horse. You know, some of those shoes are, are fullered all the way around or have a crease around the whole entire shoe and that helps provide some extra traction. Uh, another option are, are screw in caulks. Uh, you'll see some horses have uh, caulk holes or stud holes we'll call them. And this is a nice option because you can kind of put in a different caulk or cleat essentially uh, depending on the different footing the horse may be on. This is really good for horses that are traveling and are on different footings and you may not know what kind of footing the, you'll, you'll be faced with with each, with each competition. Another property of the footing to consider is how much the horse sinks into the different types of footing, uh, particularly in sand or some of the deeper footing. Um, like dressage horses, you know, you'll see some wide web shoes used in some of the dressage and some of the other disciplines. Uh, wide web shoes don't allow the foot to sink into the footing as far. You know, some of the footing can be fairly deep and that could cause excessive strain on the, on the tendons and the ligaments. Shoes can also be used to offer additional support to a foot. You know, ideally, you know, a horse's foot is able to support and provide traction and protection in, in its normal barefooted form, but you know, in our sport horses where the footing is constantly changing, the foot doesn't have time to adapt to the different types of footing. Sometimes we need to help them out with shoes, uh, particularly in su for support. There are various different types of footing uh, that you would encounter in the different types of uh, horse rings and race tracks. You know, one would be grass. Grass is probably the most natural uh, ground interface for a horse. One thing about grass, you know, when it's wet, it can be quite slippery. Uh, but I think, I think uh, grass with proper moisture content is probably one of the more ideal footings for a horse's foot. Uh, another footing type are the, is dirt. You know, dirt varies depending on how it's harrowed and how it's maintained and also the moisture content of it. Uh, another footing you'll see is uh, sand. Uh, sand can be quite deep. Uh, it can be, a horse can sink in quite a bit. Uh, it can be slippery as well, uh, you know, depending on what type of sand it is. And again, the moisture content would affect the uh, properties of all these different types of footing. Here's an example of a horse uh, training on a, on a synthetic surface. You can just notice this foot when it hits the ground. There's very little slip. That foot kind of just hits the surface and stops. You know, so for, perhaps for a, a, with this particular footing type and this horse's job, you know, maybe a, a wider web shoe, maybe 
a good option for this horse to allow some, some slippage when that foot contacts the ground. Uh, this next video, you can see this Clydesdale uh, walking on the pavement. You know, here, uh, here, especially if the pavement was wet um, or, or even dry, this foot would slide quite a bit before it came to a halt. So you know, a foot like this would, would require a shoe with more traction. Uh, you would see horses that are working on roads. Some of these will use some synthetic shoes with, with a rubber bottom on them. Uh, some will have traction such as borium or, or heel caulks, uh, such as these in the photo, uh, which would provide more traction and allow this foot to not slip too much, which would be dangerous. Uh, but again, you would need to properly choose your shoe type for all these different types of footing, depending on uh, how it's kept up and the moisture content of each one.